up until a certain point in my life, I felt like my life was just going to be negative. Okay. I believed all of the things that people were saying about me. I believed that I could only achieve to a certain level, which hindered me. But then I stopped giving a damn about what those people were saying, what they were thinking. And I said to myself, if I apply myself now, if I just do it, I'm going to go on and do some great things. My family life before going into care was absolutely great. I was born to two parents, a lot of extended family members. I had lots of cousins, lots of friends. That's what childhood should be about. There were a few things that led up to me going into foster care. My dad left when I was eight years old. That led to my mum going through depression and it ruined this really strong person that I loved dearly. That meant I had to take care of her and I had to take care of my brothers as well. That's when we were introduced to a distant relative of our family. I, I had just turned nine years old at this point. And I was thinking this is gonna be great too because I'm the eldest sibling. It was very, very tough not having anyone to talk to, not having anyone to look up to because the person that I previously looked up to had left. This is what I really, really want. And around six weeks into our relationship, things just changed. We went from playing football and watching wrestling together to just participating in things that I felt really uncomfortable in. The sexual side of things started with viewing pornography. That then led into full-on sexual abuse. I felt really uncomfortable with all of this, but it was ingrained in my mind by him that this is just what boys do. In order to become a man, you need to watch this, you need to do this. So I thought, okay, well, every kid's got to do it then. And this abuse lasted for around three years. My abuser was making a lot of enemies at this point. That led up to him leaving. This is then when I thought that I could speak out. This was around the time when there were still things such as school nurses about. And I was speaking to this school nurse and she was asking me how I was, why I was missing school, and this is when I broke down. So much emotion just came pouring out, but I immediately tried to retract what I had said because I was told on a daily basis that if anybody ever found out that he would kill me and my family members. And I knew that he was serious because on one occasion he took a blunt piece of glass and he put it across my wrist and he told me that next time if anyone found out that he would go all the way and he would cut my wrists. So I immediately tried to take those words back, but by this point it was too late. By the time I got home, there were two social workers there. My three youngest brothers were taken into care. Around six months after that, myself and my younger brother, we were taken into care as well. I remember arriving at my foster placement I arrived at a big white house that I thought only ever existed in Washington, DC. I kept on telling my social worker, I'm not going, you can't make me. And he said words to me that are still with me today. You have no choice. I already knew that. I then sucked it up, just went inside. But I remember walking into the dining room and there were so many people sat around this table and they were all talking about me, but never to me. They were talking about rules boundaries, what time I'd have to be in by, what time I was going to go to bed. They were expecting me to conform to this new life. But at this point, I'm thinking rejection. So I wanted to identify something I could break. Because I thought if I smashed something that was valuable to them, they were going to get rid of me. And that's when I knocked this glass ornament off of the uh, mantelpiece and it just smashed. I remember walking up the stairs thinking I was king of the mountain, top of the world. But then when I closed that door, my bedroom door, and I laid on the bed, I was just a scared little kid thinking, what is happening? What is my life? How have I chosen this? So from 13 years old, I was told that I was never going to achieve academically, socially, financially. And I was told that I was never going to have intimate, lasting relationships with people because of the things that I'd done, the things that I'd experienced. So obviously when you're told 
all of these things from a young age, that is going to really damage your self-esteem, your self-worth, etc. But it damaged my ambition. I had nothing to look forward to. So all I kept thinking was, what is the point in me trying? I really, really struggled with that. I remember being at school one day and my best friend, and he said to me, you know, Nick, you're always claiming you want to be just like us. You want to stop being a clown. You want to achieve, etc." But he said three words to me that no one had ever said to me before. Just do it. If you want to go on and you want to do well at school, if you want to go and do stuff with your future, just do it. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to try hard. I'm going to knuckle down. And that's what I did. I then went on to achieve my A, A to C's in my GCSEs, to achieve in my A levels, to getting off to university and getting a university degree. And when I was having my picture taken and I had my, my, my cap and my gown on, it's just a crazy surreal moment for me to think I achieved academically and I was told so many times that it wasn't going to be possible. So the way that these experiences have shaped me is that I try to live the most positive way that I can every single day. Don't get me wrong, there are still times when I'm feeling low, when I'm feeling down. But I have to think about how much good stuff I have within my life currently. If I could change what happened to me, would I? Absolutely. I don't believe any child should ever have to go through the things that I had to go through. But the reality is I cannot change what happened to me as a kid. But what I can change is my future. I'm grateful to be able to share my experiences to hopefully in some small way have a positive impact upon one person. Because if I can do that, if I can help change someone's life, if I can help someone grow and develop, then I've succeeded in what I wanted to do. Whether you've been through fostering, adoption, or you've got nothing to do with fostering, the fact is we've all been through rubbish in our lives. Please don't let your past define you. That is my key message. Do not let your past define you. Go on, change your future, get to where you want to get to because you'll feel so good about yourself in the end.